According to a documentary, over 18,000 people were trafficked in 2014 across 85 countries. While about 158 countries have criminalized human trafficking, which is a huge improvement over the past 13 years, it is claimed that it is the third largest after arms smuggling and money laundering. Trafficking has become big business, not just internationally, but also locally. Internationally, it is claimed that it is $150 billion a year, although it might be more. It has taken a horrible dimension because now we also have elements of organ harvesting, where organs are sold in the open black market, where people are killed for their organs. It was said that 70% of persons trafficked included women and girls, which is a worrisome statistic. In this edition of the program, we intend to take a look at trafficking as an assault to the beauty of the African woman. And we had a Director General of NAPTIP to speak with us on this crucial topic. And welcome to another interesting episode on Mata Africa on Television Nigeria. My name is Blessing Akwara. Today we'll be discussing trafficking as an assault on the beauty of African women. And our woman is the Director General of NAPTI, Dame Julie Oka Donley. But please stay tuned and when we return, we'll move further in the discussion. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country so, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you've not missed um, much. We're discussing trafficking as an assault on the beauty of the African woman. And we're meeting DG of NAPTI. Ma, we're pleased to meet you. Thank you for coming. Ma, uh, there's this um, feeling and the atmosphere for the first time that there is an organization like NAPTIP, considering the statistics of people being trafficked out of the country. One would think NAPTIP was just established yesterday. Um, NAPTIP will be 15 years old in July this year. And um, since its inception, NAPTIP has been fighting the crime of human trafficking. Um, NAPTIP has the power to arrest, to investigate, to prosecute, and of course to protect victims of human trafficking. And that's what we've been doing for the past 15 years. That's great. Talking of um, your, uh, for, for NAPTIP coming to be 15 years in July. Now, we also understand that you're not the first female head of this organization. And we want to know what makes your administration so unique that everyone is talking about NAPTI. Well, you tell me, because you're telling me my administration is so unique and everyone is talking about NAPTI, so you should tell Recently, me. Recently, we saw some deportees that came in from Libya and all of that, and in a very long time, we've not had some um, people that have been trafficked return back to the country. And then, 
it gave us a sense, a cause to worry, rather, because if we have uh, our children being out of the country for obvious reasons like prostitution, hard labor, and all, what have we been doing all this while, and what extent have we gone? Um, first of all, let me let you know that um, human trafficking doesn't take place just outside of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of cases, trafficked cases in other West African countries and even within Nigeria. We have internal trafficking as well as external trafficking. Uh, most of those who were returned to Nigeria were actually on their way to Europe, but they got, you know, intercepted in Libya and um, they were kept in detention camps for a while. And um, His Excellency, Mr. President, you know, directed that they be brought back home because they were stranded and they were desirous of coming back to Nigeria. And so His Excellency directed um, some agencies, some relevant agencies, to go to Libya to ensure that those who wanted to come back home were brought back home in dignity and rehabilitated and slowly reintegrated back into the society. So they, at the end of the day, they are useful to themselves and to the society as well. Okay. Now, why do we have most African families give out their girl child for trafficking? Could this be religious belief, cultural, or for financial benefits? Um, most people do not give out their girls for trafficking. They actually give out their girls to assist them to better their lives, or so they think. And that's where the deceit comes in from. Because, I mean, if you go to the rural areas, for example, where people have little or no access to the internet facilities and they don't really know what's going on because they are ignorant of what is going on in reality, and um, they tell you, I'm going to send your daughter to school. You have too many children. You can't feed them. You can't take care of them. I'm going to send them to school. Why don't you give them to me? They give them with the hope that, of course, their lives will be better. Secondly, I think it's also a cultural thing where people give their children out to, you know, go and serve their relations, their uncles, their aunties, and all of that, you know, at home. I mean, in exchange for sending them to school or paying them salaries to work as house helps and things like that. So this is a scenario we find ourselves. But unfortunately, uh, traffickers have taken over this trust of, you know, of the family life, you know, where they go and deceive these people, these ignorant people, that they are going to get a better life for their children, and they release them to them, and of course, the rest is history. Okay. According to a new report from the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, the majority of human trafficking victims, 71% are women and girls. Why is this so? Because women are seen as sex objects. That's why it's so. Um, a lot of those who are trafficked are trafficked for the sexual exploitation. I mean, they use them as prostitutes for the traffickers, you know, sexually exploiting them and making monies, you know, um, on them. And of course, the children, now we have a lot of pornography going on, the child pornography and all of that. So these are the reasons why it appears to be so. Thirdly, when it comes to domestic servitude, don't forget that women are seen to be more suitable as domestic servants and so that is why um, the ratio between the men and the women is uh, a bit high but now um, times are changing because um, human trafficking now is not just about sexual exploitation and domestic servitude we also have forced labor we also have sexual exploitation for men as well even though a lot of men are silent on that but it's happening and so you find out that these days the rates the ratio is not so 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 high compared to what it was before and they need them on the farms they need hard working men to work in the farms and the quarries and places like that for hard labor and all of that so now the ratio is almost you know almost 50 50. what is Nati doing to the women who have been rescued and brought well the women who are rescued who are lucky to be rescued actually are taken to the shelters. NAPTIP has shelters where we um, rehabilitate victims of trafficking. And we take them to the shelters, we take care of their um, um, counseling, psychosocial support is given to them. Um, some of them have health conditions, we take care of them, you know, they are health wise. Um, we also give them some skill acquisition or send them to school for those who want formal education. Depending on what they want, we engage them and we assist you know, when we can. And of course, we now reintegrate them back 
into the society. So that's what NAPTIP has been doing and that's what NAPTIP continues to do because that's one of our mandates to rehabilitate and reintegrate them back into the society. To our parents out there and to the viewer out there watching right now, what do you have to tell them about this trafficking um, thing going on? How do we stop it? How do we inculcate people into understanding that trafficking does not have to be by um, giving us hope, the youths or the younger ones who are desperate for a better life hope to go abroad, which they can do here even better? Um, first of all, I would advise parents to bring their children up properly because unfortunately most of these victims are really victims of their upbringing. Um, the parents need to begin to understand that, I mean, there's no place like home and then whatever it is you think you can make out there, you can also make it here. The children, we need to change their mindset. The youths need to change their mindset and um, they need to begin to believe in Nigeria first and believe in themselves because most of these victims of trafficking are people with very low self-esteem uh, because they don't have any belief in themselves or in the country or the belief that they can make it in. Thank you very much, Ma. And thank you for having the discussion with us today. That was very interesting and informative. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. Equipped computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities. An all embracing curriculum for total development of the child. Comprehensive education for leadership. Join us today from crash to secondary levels. Leaving Treasures Academy. Committed to excellence. The strength of an African woman is to always win. For an African woman watching out there, you should always try to win because winning is a solution to your strength. I remain blessing Aquara, your favorite host. Have a good evening.